I have been drinking a crazy amount of milk tea today because it's freaking cold in my room, which I'm super happy about because that means that autumn is back, but I am quite cold, so I got my blanket here and my milk tea, so that's that. Now you know. <laughs> Hello beautiful people of the internet. So recently I had one of the best experiences I've ever had in my entire life and I wanted to share it with you. So that's what I'm doing today. <laughs> Maybe I should give you a little bit of backstory before we actually start. The thing is that I have always been super passionate about music. My entire life, for as long as I can remember, has always been all about music. My mom used to tell me stories about when I was little that I would stand on top of the coffee table and sing on tape at the top of my lungs in my little tutu dress <laughs> on the table so everyone could see me. I also remember her saying that when I was in kindergarten I was the only one in my class who could actually finger paint or well hand paint and dance at the same time. It was like a, a, a motoric skill test kind of thing and I was the only one in my class who had the rhythmic to actually dance into the rhythm of the music and do two things at once. I always had a passion for dancing and performing. I used to do ballet when I was younger. I did it for two years and then the teacher didn't like me so I left. I did hip-hop, I did normal street dance, I did two years of musical. So dancing and moving and just music in general has always been in me. I've always wanted to do something with music and it's only when I started doing musical that I actually took up the singing microbe or how do they call it? From the moment I did the musical thing is when I started also singing because before that it was all just dancing for me and it's actually my teacher, my musical teacher, the only one of the entire crew who believed in me, that actually made me do the thing because I stopped doing musical after the teachers didn't like me there either. For some reason teachers don't really seem to like me when it comes to arts. <laughs> I don't know why. But he was the only one who actually believed me so I continued doing that passion. I went from dancing to musical, from musical to singing, and then from singing I just never stopped. I remember doing some singing at school concerts, usually just covers. I remember always having really good points in music class, which I did not have for a lot of years, but the years that I did have it in my school package, I guess, I always scored so well on it. I used to sing with classmates for the school as well to raise money for charity. I took two years of piano lessons. After that, I learned myself how to play guitar and ukulele, so I'm basically completely self-thought. Music has always been one of my biggest passions. It always has been and it probably always will be. So for me, to be able to play my very first concert was like a dream come true. It's it's what I've always wanted to do. It, technically, this wasn't really my first concert concert because like I said, I did perform on stage for school things. I had actually also already performed with my ukulele under Sarah Spark, which is my artist name, at a wedding. But again, it was mostly covers and honestly, it wasn't really good. It was terrible actually. <laughs> but that's a story for another time. This was the very first time that I actually got to sing my own songs at an actual concert, which is still so unbelievable to me. So yeah, today I'd like to tell you how it went down. Now I'm going to start by saying it wasn't like a huge thing, like it was a little venue, it wasn't even a venue, it was like a room where they just put chairs and a little podium kind of thing, so it wasn't even a big deal, but to me it was and I would like to tell you the story about that today. So it actually all started with my friend Jared. So I met Jared at VidCon for the first time, we'd been in the same YouTube group for a little while as part of the YouTube squad as we like to call ourselves, the outfluencers if you will, and we just really really clicked during VidCon, like I had such a good connection with him that we just started talking after that and we just have been talking for almost every single day since VidCon and he is just so amazing, I love Jared so much. And at some point I get this ad on my Facebook, weirdly enough, where I see that for the opening of the culture center in a place very near where I live. They were looking for young artists who wanted to perform. Now this didn't really need to be about music or anything, it could also be just your poems or a dance performance or whatever you want it to be. And I didn't really know what to do, I, it sounded interesting to me and since I haven't really gotten the chance to get myself out there, I actually went to Jarrett for 
advice and I said, hey, so there's this thing that this cultural center does. I would like to give myself up for it because they need to select people, but I'm not sure if I should or not. I actually felt very brave that day because he ended up assuring me that it was like a golden opportunity that I had to take the chance if I could. So I listened and I sent the man a mail with my YouTube channel link in it attached as well so that they could see what I'm up to, I guess. And I didn't hear from him for a little while, but then I kind of got selected. So I couldn't believe it at first. So he was the first one to know as well. He was the first one I contacted saying, oh my God, Jared, you're never gonna believe it. I got selected and he was so happy for me, which again, I'm very, very grateful for because of all the people out there, I think that Jared is the one who actually supports me the most in this dream. Like he's the one who's always been there for me and who always really believes in my abilities as an artist, I guess, since he does a lot of music stuff as well. If it wasn't for Jared, I probably wouldn't have done it. So naturally, months go by, I still have a lot of things to do and a lot of time to check out my set list and do all of that kind of stuff. And at some point I go to my favorite music store to get my ukulele checked out because my semi-acoustic ukulele didn't really function all that well anymore. So I went to the music store to get it all checked up. I told the guy as well that I was going to have my very first concert with original music. And when he asked me where the opening party, the opening fest, I guess, of this cultural center. And he was like, oh, but well that's actually kind of a very big deal. And I started panicking because I was all up in my nerves at that point. <laughs> oh yeah. According to the man, it was a big deal. So I started shaking, but because I have a very sick brain and because my mind doesn't work like normal people do, instead of starting to put together a set list and instead of starting to practice it, I just procrastinated on the entire thing. <laughs> Before I knew it, it was the day of the concert and I had nothing ready. Good morning. I literally just woke up. It's just a bit past seven, I think. Yeah. And I have my first concert in three hours. Well, a bit longer than that, but I have to be there in three hours. I still need to practice a little as well because my stupid brain I decided to procrastinate on everything and I'm completely unprepared. I guess I have a few songs ready, but I don't really have a set list or anything, so this is exciting. Uh, I'm still sleepy. I'm still like half asleep at this point. <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna go get ready because I have a concert to play. That's so unreal. <laughs> So yeah, after that, I did my makeup, got ready for the day, and I decided to also kind of do some exercises, I guess. So I wanted to do some vocal exercises before the concert started. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> okay, I can't do this. And I decided to also start practicing a little bit. And although I didn't really had a set list prepared, I did want it to have a few songs that I could play. I've always been very good at improvising, so I thought I could wing it by then. And then I got to the venue. I had this check-in kind of situation, so I practiced my concert set again. The guy at the info stand said that I had the biggest indoor room of, out of all of them, so it was kind of a big deal. And then slowly the people started Started, like merging in and there were a decent amount of people I think there must have been around 20 people and the best thing about it is that I knew all of them <laughs> I knew every single one of the people that came it turned into less of a concert and more of a just like a get-together I guess so I think that's one of the reasons I really really felt at ease as well so I played my concert I was a bit shaky at the beginning but I just felt so loved and so supported the entire time that it didn't really feel like an actual concert you know and that's actually what I really loved about it too. It's just because it was so familiar and it had such a good vibe. Everybody genuinely wanted to be there and everybody just genuinely supported me and I felt so very loved. It was really lovely. So I played my set, played about four songs, I guess, because I had a half an hour to fill. I did give myself a little challenge and I also mixed two songs in together. So I had one song 
play into the other one and it worked out really well because people thought it was one song so hey challenge succeeded <laughs> and yeah at the end because I still had a few minutes left people wanted me to do a bis number I don't know if that's how you call it in English as well but it's basically where the artist goes off stage and then it comes back on stage to play another song that but without leaving the stage basically so I played another cover I played still into you by Paramore and I had the audience sing with me which was really cool and I just had a great experience overall I should be over all the butterflies I'm into you I'm into you <laughs> And in the evening on our worst nights I'm into you I'm into you <laughs> Going into this concert, I was actually kind of scared because like I said, this was the first time that I actually played my own songs. So I was so afraid to just open myself up to that. I was so afraid to just open up my soul and let people just basically watch it, you know, just look into my head like that. It's a scary thing. But again, I felt so supported and so loved and I had a lot of lovely comments afterwards saying how beautiful my songs were and how much they liked it. And that to me is like the biggest achievement because I write my songs usually when I'm feeling very low. Like I have a lot of mental issues and I also have a lot of feelings. Like I just feel a lot, that's just how I work. I am very bad at dealing with these feelings. So what I do is I write songs, which in my eyes are not really good songs. So that's also why I don't really share them with people. So that's why I also don't really have a lot of them on my channel right now because I'm just afraid of showing people the deepest and darkest parts of myself. Myself. And the fact that everybody there was so supportive and so kind to me, it just felt really good. I felt really loved and I'm excited to start sharing more of my stuff because, I mean, if my closest friends and family like the things that I write, then I'm sure it's not going to be that bad to lay open my soul on the internet for people on the internet to destroy me. <laughs> I'm just being negative right now. No, I, it was really nice. I really appreciated it and it was really cool. I even got flowers at the end of it, so there were even people there whom I did not expect to actually show up which meant so much to me as well so yeah I had an overall really good experience now because this was of course a big kind of fest kind of thing I stayed a little bit longer I was one of the opening acts I guess I think I was the second one to play that day so it was very early in the morning after my concert I just kind of hung out with my friends who were there so I hung out with Darcy and my best friend Evelyn until I got tired of it and we all went home and that was it. It was great. <laughs> so that was my first concert experience. I don't really know what will become of this video. I'm not even sure if it's actually a good video or not, but I just really wanted to get this off my chest. I really wanted to talk about it because to me, it was nothing like I thought it was going to be. I guess I wanted to just capture this moment for myself. So in a couple of years, when I have more stage experience that I can look back on this and just have the good memories because that's what they will be, I guess. They're gonna be great memories. So yeah, that was my first concert, I think. If you want to know more about my adventures, I do recommend you to check out my Instagram. It's Sarah Spark. You can follow me on there. I upload quite regularly on my stories these days. So if you want to know more about my adventures and stuff, I do recommend checking it on there because that's usually where it comes on first. I also filmed the entire concert, which wasn't really too long. It was like 20 minutes, I think. But I didn't really know if it would fit on my channel or not. So I decided to upload it with a hidden link which I will also add in the description and in the cards somewhere in one of the corners as well. Mostly for the people who weren't there and who want to check it out that they can do it there but also just for in case you're interested and you want to know how I did you can also just watch the video because it will be online for you to check out if you'd like to. That was it for me I guess. Thank you very much for listening to my little story. I know it wasn't the most interesting thing that happened but to me it was just very lovely and I just really wanted to document it. So thank you very much for sticking until the end and it really means a lot to me. So yeah, that's it then, I guess. So thanks again for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it and I will see you again very soon. Bye.